Hello, my friends. How are you today? You're listening to the St. Mark Bemidji podcast, which invites you to take a deeper look at God's word. Don't just sit at home and listen to this podcast. Go outside and listen to it on your phone speakers. Let everybody hear, stand out in the crowd, and be a special creation that God made you to be. Today, we're going to press on ahead in our evangelism study through the book, Be at Leisure, by Andrew Richard. Today's chapter is titled, Procreation. But don't worry, you don't have to cover a little ears to hear this one without guilt. Pastor Richard speaks plainly and clearly in a biblically pure sense about this topic. You might want to listen to this one twice, as the concepts expressed here today are ancient, yet in today's fallen and depraved world, they're foreign to us. Once you take a look at the thoughts, however, I feel that this is one of the most deeply meaningful chapters in the book. Let me know what you think in the YouTube comments or in an email to john.kirk at stmarksbemidji.org. And if you missed the previous chapters in this study, I'd like to encourage you to go back and listen to the last few episodes. It'll be well worth your time. And now, on to today's content. So, we've talked about why the Church need not fear for her survival. We've started the discussion of outreach with the importance on doctrinal faithfulness, the appropriateness of beauty, and the essence of congregational hospitality. Our discussion of outreach now moves out a ring as we come to the matter of bringing people to the congregation. How is it done? Bringing new people to the congregation begins with the family. The family consists of a husband and wife who have children. Ordinarily, couples have children through procreation, occasionally through adoption. Since procreation is the means instituted by God in paradise for having children, it will be my focus here though couples who adopt are certainly also families in God's sight and are by no means to be despised. The family has this special honor from God, that it is the most fruitful arm of outreach. Not only does God bring people to the church through the family, but he creates new people through the family. A congregation that cares about outreach should do everything in its power to extol marriage and procreation. It should also teach frankly that Cohabitation and sexual activity outside of marriage are sins, and that the practice of family planning is a plain violation of God's Word. Somewhere along the line, many parents in our country stop teaching their children that living together before marriage is a sin. The sexual revolution and the advent of birth control pills made sexual immorality seem normal, and far too many Christians either were deceived into accepting it or knew it was wrong but didn't instill the truth in their children. This led to a generation of Christian children who went along with the world, in many cases jettisoning their former beliefs entirely. Now it seems that some Christian parents care more about maintaining peaceful family relations than they do about the Word of God and the duties God has given them toward their children. Some even take offense now when pastors won't commune their children who are living in sin as if God had to change himself to suit their worldly indulgence. Also, somewhere along the line, more than a few pastors and congregations stopped speaking against family planning. It became acceptable to say things like, one and done, or we only want two, as if we're the giver of life. Our congregations generally make the clear confession that we're not the taker of life, that abortion is murder and unacceptable. Well, Preventing conception isn't murder. Nevertheless, is it not preposterous to think that we can control the giving of life without offending against the giver of life? Be fruitful and multiply, the Lord said in Genesis chapter 1, verse 28. Who are we to say, no, you don't have to bother yourself about that? So, what should we do to uphold marriage and procreation within our congregations? Parents should teach their children the truth about marriage as God has instituted it, that it's God's union of one man and one woman, permanent and exclusive. Living together and sharing a bed is for marriage. Parents should also teach their children that they were made for marriage. It is not good that the man should be alone, the Lord said in Genesis chapter 2, verse 18. While it is certainly not a sin to remain unmarried, The person to whom God has given the gift of lifelong celibacy seems rare indeed. 
Parents should teach their children from a young age which qualities are godly in the opposite sex and which are not. Parents should also teach their children to marry a Lutheran. Having mixed confessions of Christ within a marriage leads to marital strife and to passing on a watered-down faith to the children who are the fruit of that marriage. Parents should also raise their children to desire children of their own. Parents spend a good deal of time talking about their children's futures in terms of employment. Sons need to hear as much about marrying a godly Lutheran woman and having children as they do about the workforce. And daughters need to know that being a homemaker is a high calling from God. Don't speak condescendingly of homemakers, calling them stay-at-home moms, as if they're sticks in the mud who need to get out and do something with their lives, such as dumping their children at a day orphanage and letting them be raised by strangers who don't love them. That's what parents should teach their children, so that marriage and procreation are valued by the next generation. Now, what shall congregations do as a whole? Our daughters need to hear that the greatest thing they could possibly do with their lives is to become a homemaker. And they aren't to hear it from their parents only. Older women are charged in Scripture to teach such a thing to younger women. Paul writes to Titus, Older women are to teach what is good, and so train the young women to love their husbands and children to be self-controlled, pure, working at home, kind and submissive to their own husbands, that the word of God may not be blasphemed. Titus chapter 2 verses 3 through 5. Ladies' aid groups could make these verses their mission statement, and they should consider how they can instill these things in the young women of the congregation. Their greatest service would simply be modeling godly marriage according to those verses from Titus 2. In addition, faithful older women could mentor younger women one-on-one. Women who have been homemakers their whole lives are also in a unique position to speak highly of that life. Within our congregations, we should never make jabs at our spouses or at the opposite sex in general. Husbands are to be like Christ, who covers the sins of his bride and does not spread them around. Wives are to be like the church, who only has praise and thanksgiving for her husband, with no complaint or accusation of wrongdoing against him. There should be no jesting about the typical woes of marriage, as if marriage were some cheap trinket that only brought trouble. The frequency of this jesting has no doubt contributed to the low view of marriage that now spans several generations. Terms like divorce, ex-husband, and ex-wife should be regarded as profanities among Christians and those who insist on talking about such things openly and publicly should be reprimanded, especially if there are children present. Congregations should celebrate the anniversaries of couples who have remained faithfully married and the weddings of first-time couples who have remained pure. Congregations should assist families with young children by holding babies or hymnals during the service. Congregations should expect that parents and children will be together in church and should never remove the children from the service for children's church. Such a practice drives a wedge between generations. Whereas, in church, children learn to be faithful churchgoers simply by watching their parents. Congregants should never scowl at the mother of a noisy child, nor distract children from paying attention during the service. Baptisms should be a high cause for celebration within a congregation. At baptism, we watch a person being saved, being brought out of the devil's kingdom and into Christ's kingdom. At the baptism of an infant, we see the greatest form of church growth. The Lord has added a child to the human family and now has added that child to God's family. At the baptism of an infant, we see the greatest form of church growth. The Lord has added a child to a human family and now has added that child to God's family. These are all simple ways to uphold marriage and procreation within a congregation. And when congregations uphold marriage and procreation in their midst, they should know that they have done a great deal in the way of congregational outreach. More next time, my friends. We hope that today's meditation on God's Word has enriched you. Divine services are held right here in Bemidji, Minnesota at 8 a.m. and 10.30 a.m. on Sunday mornings. Sunday school and adult Bible study is also offered between our Sunday services at 9.15 a.m. 
Our church services are live streamed at 8 a.m. on Sunday mornings and are available afterwards on our channel, St. Mark Lutheran Church Bemidji. If you're listening or watching this podcast, you are cordially invited to join us in person next week and every week. This is our fourth year producing this podcast, and there is a large archive of devotional material online available if you want to learn more about God and His Word. Visit www.stmarkbemidji.org or look in the show notes in this podcast for a link to this and many other meditations on God. You can also search for St. Mark Bemidji on YouTube to find our channel. If you have any questions or you would like more information about our church and its ministry, please visit our website, which is once again, www.stmarkbemidji.org. All scripture readings are taken from the Holy Bible, New International Version, copyright 2011, and are used by permission from Zondervan. Meditation's daily devotional is published by Northwestern Publishing House and is also used by permission. If you enjoy this podcast, please consider subscribing and telling a friend. May God bless the rest of your day. Hey there, parents. Are you on the lookout for a fantastic school in the Bemidji area that embraces Christian values? Well, look no further. Introducing St. Mark's Christian Day School, where education meets faith in an extraordinary way. At St. Mark's, we get it. We understand that your child's education should be rooted in God, compassion, and unwavering faith. Our experienced team of dedicated educators are here to provide a top-notch education to students in grades K through 8 that nourishes the mind, heart, and soul. With small class sizes and a personalized approach, we create a safe and dynamic environment where your child can explore the God-given talents and excel academically. Our teachers integrate biblical principles throughout the day, ensuring your child grows into a compassionate and morally grounded individual. Our students are also able to participate in extracurricular activities with the Bemidji School District. For more information about St. Mark's Day School, call John at 218-444-3939 or at principal at stmarksbemidji.org.